Good morning. It's uh, Sunday the 31st of January. The temperature is about two and a half. And I'm on the Esplanade just outside Hollywood at uh, what you might call Kinnaker Village. Now this is the Dirty Duck. All closed up of course. Restaurant and pub. Oh, there's something you don't see every day an aeroplane. And just on in there is Kinnaker Army Base. And Robin Swan, uh, Chief Medical Man Robin Swan, our Health Minister, who knows all about medicine, not. At the start of the uh, lockdown, way back in March, he ordered that there was uh, a refurbishment of one of the buildings there costing four million pounds and that became uh, the, the upgraded Belfast mortuary to take in all the uh, Covid patients that were due to die. It cost four million. It hasn't been used. Robin Swan predicted 25,000 deaths and scared the living daylights out of so many people. And so far, we've got under 1,500 COVID connected deaths. Whether they died of COVID or not is another thing because apparently uh, we don't have any flu. We don't have any flu this year. But I'm not going to talk about that anymore. This is Hollywood, Kinnaker, and this is the Esplanade. And we've got to be warned of uh, unexpected waves. So uh, there's a wee, a wee uh, memorial. Let's see what it says. Happy birthday, Dad, missing you. Um, obviously there's been a tragedy here. I'm not going to go into that. But I'm going to try and get myself down again before I fall off this. And we were out for a walk here yesterday. Along Belfast Lock. And the place was coming down with people. Family groups in particular, cyclists, dog walkers, joggers, all. And the, the temperature was bitter. It, it's, it's cold this morning and it was something similar yesterday. And those people, by the dozen, by the hundreds, were out along this Esplanade, there's a, a pier trying to break the strength of the waves and look at all the, these stones piled up again trying to negate the strength of the waves because they'll come right in over here. I admired the, uh, that terrace house there, probably dating from around the 1900s. Uh, So, so I'm going to repeat the walk that we did uh, yesterday along the pathway here. Uh, looking over to the right is Hollywood and we've got Hollywood train station and halt over there. And a wee tribute to our NHS workers in the rainbow. And rightly so. Looking across Belfast Lock. But you've seen so many ships come and go. And there's the Stennis waiting to go over. 
to Liverpool and Kern Ran. Guys out on their bikes. A lady there, actually. And taking it back to 1940 and 42, Second World War, and taking it back to 1944, well, in 1944 the American troops came in here, were transported to fight against Hitler, and 300,000 American troops passed through Northern Ireland and of course it's largely been forgotten but in in this uh, Belfast Lock and Bangor um, the uh, fleet assembled <coughs> to prepare and go for the D-Day landings and they left from Bangor, just along the coast. And Eisenhower gave the uh, send off. <laughs> it's nipping this morning, it's nipping. Joggers were out in force. And some of them aren't young fellas either. There's a seal. Where is he? Right there. So his head up. There he is. Where are you? Ach, where are you? I'll get him. Ah, there he is. He's there somewhere. Ah, can't see him. And this is the railway bridge and the tunnel there, yeah, bridge. And I'll let you see into, up into Hollywood actually, the main street. From this angle. Thriving we uh, town, culture, Culturally uh, very interesting, historically very interesting, and that's the uh, flagpole, the Maypole, in the centre of Hollywood. And it's the last surviving Maypole in the whole of Ireland, and uh, every year at May, well not this year, past, crowds would assemble and uh, there would be a Maypole dance. We came along here yesterday and the waves were crashing against the walkway here, the reinforced walkway. It's very uh, quiet today. Railway just above me here, so if a train comes along I'll, I'll let you see that. Walking quite fast. Hip is grand, thank you. Uh, all those people who have uh, sent well wishes and stuff. Uh, hip is quite quite good. We Dunlin or something way down there. Um, can walk easily for five miles, no problem. Well, I'm, I'm walking on the flat mostly. 
Um, I haven't really tried it on anything like Donnard. <laughs> I think that I'll have to wait for a while. Uh, mostly on the flat, so it doesn't give me any bother. You are aware of it, but you know, it's not bad. Well pleased. Uh, if that had been uh, way last September, I knew, I knew. Or uh, was it even uh, previous September? I can't remember. Um, let me think. Uh, it was uh, way the previous September. I knew if I didn't get this. Way the previous year. I knew if I didn't get this this hip done, I was going to be in a wheelchair. So I was very, very fortunate in getting it done mid lockdown at the Ulster Clinic. Had to pay for it, mind you, uh, eleven and a half thousand pounds. But I knew I was going to be incapacitated. in pain. Morning. Uh, and it's proved a, a great job. And I'm so sorry for those folks who haven't got the money like I had to get hip replacements done and knee replacements done. And I was told that if I was waiting for a hip replacement, I use a wee uh, turnstones. What done then? Yeah, I knew. Oh, there's a whole crowd on down here. Beside that. Oh, look at that. And there's a, a red, red shank, I think it is, as well. Yeah, I would have had to wait four years for a hip replacement under the NHS. And that's the way it is. People waiting for any uh, major operation. Oh, there's the train. Big diesel. Uh, or put it on the back burner. You know, you pay into your NHS and you expect treatment. There's a really wagtail. And you have to wait four years. And by the time the four years is gone, morning, uh, you're dead. You know. So what do you pay in all those years for? You can't get treatment. And due to this virus thing, people have died waiting for essential operations for heart problems and cancer problems. Uh, they've been sidelined, sidetracked, because it's all the focus is all on COVID. And people have been, you know, you're, 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 the, our medical centres are like Fort Knox. You can't get into them. You have to phone and you get a phone consultation if you can get through. And, you know, what good is a phone consultation? You need a face-to-face, -face. you need an examination. 
and people have been dying, dying. people have been left uh, scared to go out and see a doctor eventually and worry and therefore they've died because I haven't seen anybody but I'm ranting away here I'm just letting it all hang out folks big area of shingle And uh, this is getting out is an absolute lifeline for people. Getting out for a walk because there's nothing open, nothing apart from essential shops. And and yet, you know, it's a mental and physical lifeline. And yet, again and again, we're told, stay at home, stay at home. And we have these government adverts telling us, is your journey really necessary? And, and we have all this guilt-inducing type adverts coming on as well where we're shown the uh, the face masks and faces and eyes of people working in the NHS and the caption below is look them in the eye and tell them your journey is really necessary well you know we, we have been told drummed into us over the decades that it is for our own well-being to get exercise and it's good for our mental health and it's good for our physical health yet these government inspired uh, adverts are telling us stay at home and they're guilting us and it's ridiculous This is Sea Park. And wouldn't it nice wouldn't it be nice to live in this house conservatory and get a telescope set up so that you could see exactly what's coming over or coming along the channel. And this, this is where I saw, for the first time ever, yesterday, and I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I, I saw... Uh, morning. morning. I saw Dwight, and people were walking past, and children were playing nearby, and there were Dwight, little birds, just fluffy balls. You see all the sand that's uh, been thrown up by the, by the waves. This is a sea park and the car park is, is, is well filled. Got a nice smile from that lady. Hollywood, of course, historically so, so interesting. I was just up behind those houses and trees. 
the Bangor Joe Cars race up there. And people are in the play park. We went, how we went in the play park already. It's not amazing. <laughs> oh dear, I was trying to work out which way to run there from the, the cyclist guy. At least he had a sense of humour. Lots and lots of people. See the dog and the big horns. Lots and lots of people are, are buying these big horn harnesses for the dog. And they're, they're far, far better than a, just a neck collar. Because they'll not choke a dog. big houses up there, by that one there in particular. Uh, that's Baltic. See with that uh, incoming breeze, we're sitting at two and a half. And with that breeze, it's, uh, you know, wind chill factor, it's more like, it's more like zero. This place will be packed. This is this is a quarter to ten in the morning, and uh, there's plenty of people about. Already. I also wondered about this uh, big block of houses here, sort of big terrace. Uh, I wondered about the history of this. Uh, I haven't really done an awful lot of research into it, but it, it's, it has been here for generations. I'm going to walk around to the corner and then I'm going to come back and that'll be my morning walk done. I'm sorry that the, the waves weren't crashing in like they did yesterday but can't have everything folks and I hope this has brought back a few uh, happy memories. This is Clan Brassel Terrace. I would love to know the history of this place. I think there was a, a landed gentry, Clan Brassel. I'm not too sure. Morning. Sitting on the dock of the bay. We are dog. What a shredding. And look at that big chunk of concrete there that has been lifted by the waves. Isn't that amazing? The power of the waves.
Oh, thank you, bud. No, no problem. Okay. <laughs> no, I think you'll go. And wouldn't you? Love to be living in a house like this on the hill with a green fencing around it. Isn't it fabulous? Morning. Isn't that house fabulous? Some people, most people actually respond to me saying good morning to them, but other people see me coming along with a video camera and with my my big hat, my big woolly hat on, and I think that I'm some kind of freak. <laughs> and we're we're heading round the corner, and behind that pier there is Hollywood uh, Yacht Club. There's a bookyard here, and I'm going to stop just when we get on round here. That's a big power station right there. Not too sure whether it's still in operation or not. And what you see the Hootie Crows doing is they lift uh, shells and they go way up high and the Hootie Crows and the normal crows do this. They lift shells and they go way up high and they drop them on this pathway and the shell bursts open. Some fabulous, fabulous houses up on this slope here. And you wonder what kind of folk can afford to live in these houses and they're all barristers and they're all they're all top police and and uh, lawyers and people like that uh, government civil servants because they're the only ones who could afford houses like that I would oh doctors and dentists so that's my wee, wee morning uh, walk that's the oil uh, terminal I think out there we we're heading on round the coast towards uh, Carrick Fergus and I look at you and all the rest of it. And, and some of our favourite places, uh, the Blackhead. Coastal walk path, absolutely brilliant. I think it's real, but no. So I'm heading back. And my wee hands are absolutely bounded. Uh, there he goes. Just love the sound of breakers hitting the the sand. It's uh, therapeutic. I'm getting out and meeting with folk who are doing the same thing. You know, running into them and having a a, a, a quick chat. You know. Keeps us all sane because we're so isolated. 
look at we we meet and see nobody. Everything is shut. We're not allowed. Here come the cyclists. This lockdown has been going on, off and on, for 10 months and we still have the virus. Nothing has changed and you know, the government is telling us that lockdown works. Well, because you're keeping people under house arrest, well, it does slow things down, but once people get out of house arrest and the lockdown is lifted, well then, the virus returns and it's spread again. So, are you going to keep us locked up forever? And it's funny, I was reading this morning that, that the flu has virtually disappeared. Isn't that interesting? We don't have any flu. Uh, this is nonsense, of course. The flu hasn't disappeared. But look at that. Worst up. We are still there, but because of the strength, thing, the, the strength of our testing, and these tests can be uh, put at different strengths, uh, flu is being picked up and is being labelled as COVID. And nobody's any the wiser. My gloves in the way there. And heading back onto the Esplanade now. The concrete esplanade and no cruise ships in this year. Just saw a girl running with a mask on there. Uh, how do you do that? Getting quite warm now. And that's my wee walk. Almost done. And I'll drive the uh, four miles home and get myself a cup of tea and a bit of toast, which would be rather nice.
and we very rarely say it on video, but many thanks uh, to all the folks who watch me and and uh, you know spend the time. I hope I, I, I bring you, you something, hopefully of cheer. I know I was a wee bit downbeat this morning, but just letting it all hang out, folks, as I said. Um, I don't mean to be like that, but a lot of people are really under pressure. And I don't like this at all. I'm under pressure. I'm stressed. I can feel it. I know. So, uh, thanks very much to all those people who watch and leave encouraging comments. Uh, I always try and reply to everybody. So I have missed you out. I apologise. I'll put it this way. It wouldn't be the same without you. So from Kennecker, County Down, just outside Hollywood, it's bye bye from me.